What's up, everyone? Today, I'm going to break down five things you should be aware of to make yourself sound significantly better on the drums. First thing, when you're playing backbeats on the snare drum, use rim shots. A rim shot is when you play the center of the drum and the metal hoop or the rim at the same time. And rim shots have a very different sound quality compared to just striking in the middle of the head. They have a lot more of an edge to them. They really cut through the air. Playing rim shots generates a lot of volume with relatively little effort, and it provides more contrast between your backbeats and your ghost notes. At this point, playing rim shots all the time has become sort of a stylistic thing for me, but there are plenty of scenarios where you you won't want to play rim shots. Maybe you really hate the sound of rim shots, in which case you don't have to use them. But in general, if you're playing pop music or rock music or you're doing cover gigs of any kind, you're really going to want to at least have the ability to play consistent rim shots. Second thing to be aware of, when you're playing on the hi-hats and the hi-hats are supposed to be closed, really put weight down on that pedal. This is something I notice primarily among beginner drummers. Uh, a lot of times they're just not putting enough weight down on the pedal. And we want to be able to press firmly on the pedal to create a really short articulate sound for pretty much the same reason we would use rim shots on the snare drum. It just allows for a wider range of dynamics and inflections. And if you're able to close the hi-hats really tight, then you could always expand from there. You could always open them ever so slightly and get a lot more nuance with how much sustain you will out of the hi-hats to carry out. Third thing to be aware of, pay very careful attention to your dynamic balance between different parts of the drum set. Technically speaking, the drum set is a collection of instruments, not just one instrument. So if we think of it like multiple instruments, we want to make sure everything can be heard clearly, but we also want to make sure that no one thing is overpowering anything else. The dynamic balance will depend primarily on the style of music you're playing. So if you're playing rock or hip hop or metal or anything that has sort of a rock feel, the kick and snare should stand out a little bit more relative to the cymbals. Since in those styles, the kick and snare really are the driving force behind the feel. But if you're playing certain styles of jazz, like bebop or big band swing or something, the cymbals are really the driving force of the feel, and the kick and snare provide support. So dynamically, the kick and snare should sit beneath the cymbals. And being able to play at various dynamic ranges will add a lot more dimension to your drumming. It's like having access to many more shades of color and different colors if you're painting. You know, it's like you probably want that 64 Crayola box that's got all the different colors in it, like macaroni and cheese and cerulean, as opposed to like the four pack of crayons you get at a friendlies to draw on the back of a kid's menu. If I were to play a rock groove, but make the hi-hats the loudest thing, it's just gonna sound kind of wrong. And conversely, if I'm just trying to swing, but I bring up the kick and snare and make them crazy loud, it just really works against the feel. It's not stylistically appropriate. Fourth thing to be aware of, let the bass drum beater bounce off of the head instead of burying it or drilling it into the head. There are a couple of reasons that I think it's really beneficial to let the beater bounce off of the bass drum. Uh, when people bury the beater, it really chokes out the sound of the kick. And beyond choking out the sound, when you bury the beater, you actually put a lot of energy back into your leg that should be converted into sound. It's the same reason you don't 
drive the stick right into the drums when you're playing on them. It totally chokes out the sound, and then you're gonna give yourself a repetitive strain injury from all the shock waves that are going back up into your arm. Before I made it a habit to let the beater bounce off of the bass drum, my hip would get kind of sore after longer practice sessions because a lot of that energy was just going straight back up through my leg. And if I kept doing that, I was pretty much guaranteed to sustain some type of injury at some point. And you run the risk of like getting tendonitis in your knee and just like really screwing up your leg. And at the end of the day, we just want to work with the pedal. We want to let the pedal do what it's designed to do. And it's actually designed to keep the beater away from the head right? That's what the whole spring is in there for. And again, there are times where it's appropriate to bury the beater, especially if you're like playing on one of those little bop kits with your wide open tuning 18 inch bass drum. If you bury the beater, it has a drastically different sound compared to letting the beater bounce off. When the beater bounces off, you get this really nice resonance. So in that case, it would be a conscious decision whether or not you wanted to let the bass drum sustain or make it a bit more punchy and staccato. If you're playing on a kick that's tuned real low and has a ton of muffling in it, it might not make any difference in the sound whether or not you bury the beater, but in that case, you should still practice letting the beater bounce back because it will spare your leg in the long run. Trust me. I typically play heel up on the bass drum pedal, but that name is sort of deceptive. It kind of implies that your heel should never touch the floor, but I totally let my heel touch the floor when it's resting in between strokes. That allows the beater to come back off of the head. And really, I feel like I'm flicking the beater against the bass drum, almost like throwing a ball against a wall or something. The fifth and arguably most important thing you could do to help yourself sound better on the drums is to record yourself playing. Pretty much everybody has a smartphone nowadays, so there's really no excuse not to record yourself practicing or performing, and it doesn't have to be like a huge production. I mean, a, a phone video that's like maybe two minutes long can be very revealing, but you just wanna have a way that you can objectively watch and listen to yourself play. In the middle of playing, it might be kind of difficult to tell whether or not your time is super solid. You might not realize that you're like shrugging your shoulder up and doing something weird with your left hand like this but if you have a video everything is revealed and it is super super humbling at first but it's one of the best things you can do to immediately diagnose imperfections or deficiencies in the way you play I have learned so much about the way I play and how to improve upon how I play by simply taking short videos of myself and watching them back. Recording myself has and continues to help inform me what I can improve upon or what I should continue practicing or give me an idea of what I should practice next. It's also helped inform me how I should set up my gear. If I noticed that I had a hard time reaching something or I was leaning back when I was playing with both of my pedals, uh, it just kind of helped me determine determine what needed to move or if I needed to raise my seat or reposition myself relative to the drums, it will just help your body and the drum set communicate more harmoniously. If you like what you saw in this video, check out my Patreon page. Your support grants you access to transcriptions for all my other lesson videos. I don't think I'm going to do transcriptions on this one. I, they, they're not really necessary. And follow me on Instagram at drummerhar to see more videos of my playing. I also teach private lessons both in person and remotely. So if you'd like to study with me one on one, send me a message and we'll set something up. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.